speakers dr c saundarajan sir is a director center for animal health studies tanu as chennai he will be uh, speaking on recent advances in diagnosis of important parasitic zoonotic diseases and another eminent speaker dr uh, shri krishna islu sir uh, is a director uh, laboratory director uh, 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 kafsu and cv rabies diagnostic lab oi reference laboratory for rabies department of microbiology veterinary college kfsu hapal bangalore and today he is going to speak on uh, rabies in livestock growing threat so you know that uh, tomorrow is uh, uh, rabies day world rabies day and that is why we organized his uh, uh, lecture today and there is also uh, we are organized the quiz on this occasion also so all the participants are uh, also requested to participate in that so far for the rabies program we have we got information from the dr patil madam that uh, there are 386 uh, participants they have registered already and those who have not registered yet they, they, they are requested to do that so i request uh, dr uh, shukla sir to introduce uh, dr c saundarajan sir to the audience dr shukla please thank you sir uh, good morning to all the participants good morning to uh, our speaker dr saundarajan sir so i have pleasure to introduce uh, dr uh, saundarajan sir uh, who is uh, who is uh, working as the director uh, center for animal health studies tanwas uh, uh, tamil nadu veterinary and animal sciences university chennai and uh, sir has uh, he did his phd in veterinary parasitology and he is having a very vast experience of around uh, 26 years and uh, sir has various awards to his credit around uh, 36 awards to his credit during his vast career and during his career he has released uh, two technologies also uh, one is uh, dorset nilgiri synthetic sheep and another is lumpy skin disease vaccine which is which is one of the uh, one of the milestone then uh, sir has guided around 5 mvsc students one phd student he has handled around 33 projects <coughs> written lot of research articles as well as 34 books and uh, he has uh, he has prepared uh, various manuals around 19 manuals around uh, two, more than 200 popular articles and sir is sir is author of around uh, more than 29 lead papers and uh, sir is uh, currently uh, editor of the indian journal of veterinary and animal sciences research and uh, he has organized around 19 national level seminars conferences webinars etc and uh, sir has attended various national and international seminars as well as presented various papers in the international and national conferences and seminars and uh, he, he has uh, various trainings to his credit and has acted as a uh, chairman and member for the various committees at national and in, national and international level and uh, sir has uh, uh, given uh, a lot of lead and guest lectures in the various seminars conferences etc and uh, sir is uh, uh, actively involved in the various extension activities and he has he has uh, given around uh, uh, 343 extension uh, participated in around 343 extension programs in which around uh, 47 tv program various radio talks various videos they, he has developed and sir is a uh, member of uh, more than 20 professional bodies so we have the we have the right, uh, right speaker to speak uh, on uh, recent advances in diagnosis of important parasitic zoonotic disease so considering his vast experience we all we it is it is uh, it is our pleasure to listen to dr sondrajan sir so sir please Uh, thank you for your uh, uh, the the uh, no, you have mentioned many thing about me and uh, thank you for the opportunity given by me i thank the organizer given a chance to talk about the uh, paper on zoonosis diagnosis of zoonotic diseases uh, whether my powerpoint is visible to you or not uh, no sir no sir please share sir yeah Hmm. 
Sir, uh, please, uh, please go to the share button and there you can share. Sir, please share your slide. ஏதான் <laughs> என்னமா அப்படிங்க ஒரு தடவை பார்த்தா அதை கரெக்ட் பண்ணணும்ல நீங்க <laughs> 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 sir is it visible sir just a minute sir it is coming Ah, sir, it is visible now. Sir, you can go to the slide yeah, mode. Yeah, uh, sorry, PowerPoint mode. Yeah, yeah, yeah.
सर फुल हाँ ओके हाँ यस सर यस सर इट इज ओके नाउ या या थैंक यू सॉरी सॉरी फॉर द डिले नो वी हैव ट्राइड इन टू थ्री सिस्टम दैट्स द इश्यू ओके थैंक यू सर ओके माय टॉपिक टुडेस टॉपिक इज ऑन रीसेंट एडवांसेस इन द डायग्नोसिस ऑफ इंपॉर्टेंट पैरासिटिक जूनोटिक डिजीज़ेस सो so regarding the parasitic zoonosis is now it is considered as a serious threat in uh, developing countries like india even though we are uh, no giving continuous education and awareness about the zoonotic disease to the public we are getting lot of diseases so like uh, angiostrongylus cryptospodiosis cystic cirrhosis dyrophiliosis and toxoplasmosis trypanosomiasis like that no many diseases no they are uh, no parasitic zoonosis even paragonomosis amoebiasis babesiosis capillariasis tick infections case out that three are most important so i am going to talk about these important uh, parasitic diseases uh, zoonotic diseases like hydatid and cystercosis uh, so everybody knows uh, the zoonosis uh, means you know either it may be from uh, human to animal animal to human both way the disease is possible even some of the uh, zoonotic diseases are uh, emerging uh, infectious disease uh, like uh, now the hydatidosis toxicosis in that toxicosis so many classifications are there based on the lesions on the uh, the particular organ like visceral larval migrants ocular larval migrants neural larval migrants even toxoplasmosis also nowadays no coming as a important zoonotic disease emerging zoonotic disease and uh, sometimes some zoonotic disease are reverse zoonosis so like amoebiasis and amoeba histolytica so these uh, reverse zoonosis uh, that do not normally occur in dog and cat but can be passed from infected people to the pet so here uh, reverse the human to the uh, uh, pet animals now the classification of parasitic zoonosis even uh, even certain endoparasite like trematode cystode response nematode responsible for uh, zoonosis and ectoparasites even mosquitoes fly flea ticks are responsible even uh, protozoan disease so many are there important are toxoplasmosis and cryptosporidiasis and how the people are getting this type of zoonotic disease in many way either through water uh, even uh, the feces Uh, for man domestic and wild animal entomoeba giardia even from water borne water sources like uh, drinking of water like uh, the visceral larval migrants ascaris and dragon plus medinensis by drinking of water the human being get the infection and sometime no by entry of uh, the the parasitic stage it will cause circulatory dermatitis through water bodies and some through intermediate host Uh, like uh, diplobatrium opistar case malaria yeah. some of the intermediate host in the water they are responsible for spreading the uh, uh, the parasitic zoonosis and uh, some certain uh, the, uh, parasitic diseases are transmitted through soil uh, primarily by ingestion of eggs and larvae even uh, the best example is toxicara uh, uh, canis egg. if the human being inserted uh, in, uh, ingest the eggs and the uh, the, the larvae stage you no know, it goes to the Uh, aberrant places like you know the instead of uh, going to the intestine or uh, it goes to the liver or sometimes it goes to the eye and uh, cause ocular larval migrants likewise you now the soil bond uh, infections are there and uh, and according to the who expert you know they cross classified the parasitic zoonosis in two ways one parasite of which the infected stages occur naturally in the food it may be the meat like uh, tinea and fish diplobatrium and through eating of mollusk also even fish born trematode infection and like this no uh, uh, the some are through food and certain parasites no that are derived from the environment soil water through the animal or food handlers and whose infection stage occurs in contamination in food so example like nococcus facial abscess uh, toxoplasma giardia so they are classified in two way one uh, from food and another uh, soil and water and um, 
So what are the zoonoses that can be transmitted by people by, by contact with the cats and dog? These are the things, even uh, hydrated cyst, you know, uh, tape form, Echinococcus granulosis, toxicariosis, toxoplasmosis, cryptosporidiasis. These diseases transmitted from animal feces when the parasitic excess are, eggs are inadvertently eaten by the human beings. Even when, while playing with the dog, if they, uh, the eggs are attached and the hairs of the uh, dogs, you know, if a play while playing with the dog, even the roundworm eggs also, sometimes they harder on the hair on the hairs. So while playing without handling, you know, washing their hand, if they eat, you no, know, they get the infection. Same way, some are vector bond uh, parasites. So like uh, fleas, ticks, flies, even I'm going to tell more about the Casinophorus disease also. And uh, some of the fleas know they are causing flea bite termites. Those who are working in that, and then, then the uh, goat farm. And I said uh, so many uh, parasitic zoonoses are there. Three are important. One is hydrididosis, everybody knows. So it is the year the adult worm present in the dog, then immature stage or larval stage is present in the liver and lung of uh, the sheep, goat, even uh, human being also. So the two types of uh, hydrididosis are there. One causes cystic, circus, uh, cystic echinococcosis uh, by a presence of echinococcus granulosis. The another one is alveolar echinococcosis because of the presence of echinococcus multilocris. So two uh, echinococcus are responsible for causing uh, one uh, cystic, cystic, cystic echinococcosis and another one is alveolar echinococcosis. So here the cystic echinococcus is always is chronic in nature and both human and uh, no animal may get the infection like animal no sheep goat cattle buffalo pigs even wild animals so in livestock the infection with the hydrated cystis is, is symptomatic but whereas in human being the, the affected uh, human being may show the symptom like you know the pain in the, mm, in the thoracic region uh, like that and uh, now everybody knows this uh, mostly the hydrated cystis in the lung liver apart from spleen heart kidneys sometimes no occasionally if the if the cyst is burst no the the uh, the, the hydrated sand or uh, the uh, brood capsule may you know spread on the bone marrow and brain and uh, there also you can see the hydrated cyst but in a uh, rare case they were reported on the muscle also usually inside always you no know, we uh, we have seen the uh, hydrated cyst majority of time it is in the inside of the uh, thoracic cavity in the organ, whereas in one case not reported, even they are in the outside, even in one buffalo calves, no, with the big swelling and the incised, then they found out and it is a hydrocele. So they occurs in the muscle of maxilla also. And coming to the diagnosis, the our topic is on recent diagnosis of things are antibody detection test like enzyme linked immunosorbase indirect hemagglutination test and latex agglutination then counter immunoelectrophoresis like that so many even immunoblot these are the certain immunodiagnosis tests can be applied for uh, diagnosis of hydrodosis and uh, uh, these various immunological tests for hydrodosis in men and animal have been attempted in india by many authors like dar parija raman and uh, so on and using the hydrated cyst fluid so collecting the the cyst from the organ, infected organ of the cattle, buffalo, sheep, and goat, they will incise the cyst and by directly collecting the cyst, cyst fluid, they will utilize, use the say, added cyst fluid antigen to do the immunodiagnostic test. But, uh, however, these assays using, by using this type of crude hydrated antigen have been non-specific. So, usually sometimes, no, it, it won't produce the specific reaction. So, because you no, know, by using this uh, crude hydrated antigen, they may cross reaction with the cystic circus senurus, senurus in the brain of sheep and goat, and the cystic circus tenicolis on the other, uh, no, the um, uh, room and momentum even in the liver, uh, uh, lung. So, and the other elementic infection also. So, by using this crude hydrated antigen, it may give the cross reaction, and uh, so in order to overcome these difficulties, this cross reaction. So we can use the purified antigen as a uh, 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 the antigen for, uh, uh, detecting the hydrocyst by using the various immunological tests. So 
So avoid these type of uh, things. We have to use the uh, purified antigen for confirmative diagnosis of hydratis cyst in man and animal. Uh, even uh, uh, so, so many so diagnosis of hydratis cyst uh, here. So many tests are there. Uh, so in that, uh, we know that uh, the oldest uh, technique is Cassoni's intradermal test by simply collecting the hydrogen fluid antigen injecting into the intradermal. It will produce some wheel like formation. That is the oldest test can be applied. Even complement fixation test also can be applied. And the counter electrophoresis, even it was you know, tried by many authors in southern India. This is the most useful technique for detection of hydride cyst in human and animals. And indirect immunoglobulination test also useful. And indirect immunofluorescent antibody test that's also you can use. And uh, the rapid antibody detection by coagglutination test, even Bhattacharya et al. 2001. They found it is a good, excellent test for uh, diagnosis of hydrolysis. And the most important one is latex uh, agglutination test, LAT, LAT test. So this is the most useful test to detect the hydride antigen. Even uh, many authors tried by using the crude antigen. And since uh, it produced some crash reaction, nowadays now they are using some uh, you know, identity antigen, uh, mm -hmm. like you know, recombinant antigen, like RAGB and RCPB, like that now. The latest agglutination test is the best one to detect the hydrodosis by using the recombinant antigen or purified antigen. So that's a useful technique. Then other techniques, dot enzyme immunoassay. It's a quick test by adding antigen antibody uh, that is a, a serum from the suspected animal uh, no, by adding the conjugate and uh, substrate, no, it will produce the uh, uh, color dot like things and the nitrocellulose membrane so this can be used for uh, detection of hydrates it's a simple test even uh, the enzyme linked immunosorbent assay you can detect the antibody titer level also even sandwich enzyme linked assay so uh, this is another technique and uh, most importantly you know one more technique available is dot latest technique is dot immuno gold immune gold filtration assay digba so i can i will uh, know uh, tell elaborately this is the one again the same like you know dot enzyme as a so immediately you can uh, detect uh, within three minutes you can detect the hydride doses and vestibular technique and uh, uh, enzyme linked immuno electro transfer blood this is another technique uh, and uh, the nowadays now they are using lateral flow through technique lateral flow technique so for a diagnosis of hydrides the best one is uh, 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 LAT, latex agglutination test and uh, LSA, dot LSA and one more thing, lateral flow assay technique. So that also no quick diagnostic test. Uh, immediately you can uh, detect uh, by seeing the color in the filter paper. This is the lattice uh, agglutination test for detection of uh, uh, the hydrodosis. Left one is controlled, right one is positive. So here simply by adding 20 microliter of serum, suspected serum, and uh, 20 microliter of uh, the the beads latex beads coated antigen so by mixing uh, with the toothpick and by rotate the slide for 5 minutes you can observe the reaction only antigen antibody suspected serum uh, that is antigen coated with the uh, latex bead by mixing it and rotate it you can see the reaction in case of positive uh, sample the agglutination of latex particle within two three minutes in the right side you now you can see the agglutination of latex particle within two three this is a quick simple test whereas in a negative uh, the particle remain as a homogeneous suspension homogeneous suspension and control whereas in pa uh, positive you can see the latex particle within two three minutes so that's why you know these latex agglutination test is uh, most uh, uh, you know useful simple technique for detection of Hydrodosis. Then another one is, I said even the dot LSI is most useful and and the, and the uh, development of technique against detection of hydrodosis is immuno, immuno gold filtration. So here you can uh, 
place you know different antigen different antigen so the antigen echinococcus antigen cystic fluid and one uh, no dot and another one is uh, the echinococcus uh, uh, p and b the, these are the purified like that and em2 echinococcus membrane antigen like that no you can by placing the antigen coated so in the antigen coated uh, uh, no, membrane by adding the uh, the serum suspected or positive serum no you can see in case of positive you can see the no uh, the, the dark uh, colored area whereas in the negative you can't see that much of dark color area this is also a quick test within 3 minutes you can detect that uh, uh, iodidosis so uh, coming to the next one toxicariasis this is another uh, problem uh, this is due to the toxic arachnis and cat eye if the dog having the infection uh, it passed the no the animal passed the eggs and uh, sometimes the eggs may be under and the animal uh, no has body and sometimes while playing the children in the uh, soil accident and uh, these you know larvae uh, goes to the other normal organ like you know uh, sometimes it goes to the uh, liver or high uh, then brain like that they produce the lesion so here the human can become infected by ingesting immunotoxic toxicara x invasive larvae so migrating larvae uh, through human body cause wide range of symptoms depending on the location now you see if it goes to the uh, the organ the natural larval migrants if it goes to you no know, occur in the you no know, cause the problem in the ocular uh, region eyes ocular larval migrants olm and uh, some of them are uh, no simply occult or uh, no covert they are called as common toxicoriasis ct and some if they uh, enter into the brain they are called as neurotoxic so four types of toxicoriasis there visceral larval migrants ocular larval migrants ct that is common toxicoriasis occult in nature and another one is neurotoxicoriasis nt so here you no know, this is the major problem our all over in the world uh, almost you know 2 million people are at the risk of this uh, toxicoriasis so here if uh, the problem is occurs in the eyes you no know, it's a simply you no know, enucleus the eyeball because passing the corneal opacity so because uh, now by, by having the various technique you no know, like a latex augmentation test elisa dart elisa so even in the department of parasitology of madras veterinary college regularly we are uh, getting the sample from uh, the eye hospital like sankara netralaya and like that no so many samples are coming if any people are there here i want to tell that some 15 years before no 15 uh, uh, 18 years before when we studied master degree at the time no the uh, the expert from the sankara netral brought with the worm collector from the eye uh, during the, uh, the operation they removed the eyeball because of having that eye lesions then we only know no find out that is the larva of toxicara causing the ocular round. thereafter no continuously we are getting the samples and we are no you no know, detecting the toxicariasis in the human being so that no if we early detect the problem no we can save the eyes by simply spending 5 rupees for giving uh, giving uh, the albendazole fenbendazole that's the treatment otherwise no imagine if you are not uh, diagnosing the disease properly, you know, it leads to the corneal opacity. And ultimately, we have to remove the eyeball to safeguard the other eyeball. So that was the situation earlier. So the patient has to spend huge money to remove the eyeball and uh, automatically they will uh, know they won't get the vision at all. But here by using this type of latex augmentation test, ELISA, dot ELISA, by quick diagnosing, we can save the eye and uh, thereby you know, you can immediately give the treatment to solve the problem of toxicariasis. So the latest technique is latex augmentation test, uh, ELISA, dot ELISA, uh, same uh, immunological test used against iodided cyst. Then uh, the third one important one is cysticercosis. Again, it is a zoonotic disease caused by the larval stage, that is cysticercus cellulose. It is uh, uh, the, the larval stage of human cystode, tinea solium. And uh, even, uh, the uh, worm, the larval stage of tinea saginata, which is also responsible for uh, cysticercus bovis, also it causes the cysticercosis. So this tinea solium, a tapeworm of human, completes life cycle uh, 
and the human and pig sometimes no because of presence of tinea solium in the human being because of the uh, auto infection and uh, the man is still acting as uh, the definitive host and uh, no need of uh, uh, the involvement of pig to defecate the feces and uh, to get the infection from the feces to the human being sometimes the human himself no act as a both the definitive host and intermediate host and by the way uh, sometimes no this uh, this is the cellulose large cells move to the brain and cause the neural cystic cirrhosis so this disease uh, uh, the human being no it cause tenosis nothing uh, no uh, tenosis and caused by the larval stages of cystic cirrhosis cellulose and in the human being no if it goes to the brain it cause the neural cystic cirrhosis sometimes it will be on the subcutaneous tissue uh, the skin of the human being it will continuously produce the uh, articular eruption itching irritation so that the uh, no the affected human being will be uh, restlessness so such a, the problem it will produce by the larval stage of, of the tinea solium that is this is a cellulose so here the porcine cystic cirrhosis is an important cause of economic loss in developing countries because of even sometimes you know, the human being it to produce the merely presence of uh, the larval stage in the skin uh, and the, because of the uh, cystic in the brain and same way you no know, in the human poor pig if this is present in the the, 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 the muzzle you no know, there will be a contamination of the uh, contamination of the meat and it leads to severe economic loss in the developing countries so in endemic areas across the world tinea solium infection human being is, is associated with uh, poverty because you no know, this problem is more common when the people are defecating in the open area so there is a chance of uh, the feces are eaten by the pig and the uh, same way you no know, by the human being get the infection by eating of uh, uncooked or raw uh, pig meat likewise you no know, this cystic is also important since it uh, ca uh, no produce severe infection and the disease problem in human being in the skin and also in the uh, brain and uh, so here for diagnosis of cystic cirrhosis these are the certain important tests like uh, complement fixation test immunization test enzyme linked electrophoresis and by using the antigen from the uh, the, the cystic cirrhosis or the squalex of the uh cystic cirque are the purified proteins from the cystic cirque they are using as an antigen so this can be used for a detection of cystic cirrhosis both in human being and also uh, pigs with the varying degree of sensitivity and specificity the use of even in uh, in in in, in uh, uh, certain cases you can apply the imaging technique like computed topography and uh, scan and the magnetic resonance imaging scan are routinely done for diagnosis of human case and the cystic cirrhosis and also that uh, these methods are not available for the pig so in the since it's a cost involvement is there human can apply this type of imaging technique to find out the uh, neurocystic cirrhosis uh, then uh, other techniques even uh, recently commercially available enzyme linked uh, elisa was evaluated for the deduction of antibody against tinea solium cystic cirrhosis this test has a lower sensitivity and uh, uh, higher specificity uh, than the EATB and other technique the most effective diagnostic technique for detection of uh, cystic cirrhosis is EATB that is enzyme linked immunosorbent assay uh, with the 100% specificity and sensitivity 98% so this EATB has been extensively used for the diagnosis of human and cystic cirrhosis and it is commercially available and it is best than the elisa and another test dot immuno assay uh, by using the es antigen excretory secretory antigen somatic antigen this is found to be better diagnostic assay in the diagnosis of uh, the uh, uh, human uh, the uh, zoonotic diseases zoonotic parasitic disease so out of so many uh, the parasitic zoonotic diseases Hydroidosis, toxicariasis, cystic cirrhosis are important. And coming to just to you know, and, and, uh, I encourage even some of the students are also there just to highlight what all the other possible uh, parasitic zoonosis, just I am uh, highlighting in a fast way. Even parampis, somosis, particularly the gastrodiscus hominis, it is an intestinal 
uh, fluke of human beings more common in India, uh, Assam, Bengal, Bihar, Odisha. This is also, you know, possible by eating. These are snail born trematode infection, uh, the parampistomosis and facial abscess by eating a water caltrop or a buffalo net, uh, when we, it is called as a bat net, devil pod, link net, link cock, like that. So many names are there. Either by eating the water caltra or water chestnut, having the metacercaria of facial abscess, by eating no, uh, these, without uh, scalding, no, the human being get the infection. Again, it is a snail bond trematode infection. And uh, then uh, uh, dichroceliosis, again, uh, this is you know, by eating sometime you know, accidentally or uh, uh, you know, by eating of uh, ant with the metacercaria, the human being may get the infection of dichroceliosis also. Then paragonimosis, here you know, by eating of you know, this uh, uh, the crab or uh, crayfish, the man get the infection. This is more common in Madras, West Bengal, Assam, Manipur. Even recently, you know, we are regularly getting this type of uh, paragonimus uh, flukes from uh, the um, leopard cat uh, from the wild uh, animal zone area. And uh, since uh, uh, if those infected animal goes and pass their feces and uh, the, it infect the Melania uh, snail, and the release of uh, circaria from the malaria, it may accidentally attach with the uh, on the uh, crayfish and crab and become the medicine. So by eating the uncooked or raw uh, crab and crash, the people, particularly the tribal people, because since we are getting a lot of sample from the, uh, the, 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 the Mudumalai forest area, more number of tribal peoples are there, they may get the chance. So further you know, studies are there to find out whether it is you know, uh, really causing the problem to human being. And another one is Opistar case by eating the fish along with the um, metacercaria, the man get the infection. Even clonarch is more common in China by eating the uh, fish like a common carp and a crab, uh, grass carp, the human being get the infection. And the same way cystosome is so many human cystosomes are there and it is transmitted by the, these are the uh, snail born uh, trematode uh, uh, parasitic zoonotic diseases and it will produce the circarial dermatitis. Even uh, uh, the cystosome present in cystosome hematobia, hematobia in the urinary uh, tract, no? it causes the uh, bladder, bladder cancer. Even a cystosome mansonae in the intestine, it causes the lymphoma of the spleen. And uh, cystosome mechanchi, uh, it causes hepatomegaly and spleenomegaly. All are responsible for uh, no? through uh, the snail. And these are the certain snails responsible for spreading the disease and responsible for the, uh, the parasitic zoonotic diseases. And this is the, if uh, the people are, you know, swim in the uh, water body with the uh, avian uh, cystosome uh, spreading uh, uh, snail, and uh, they, the human being get the uh, uh, circular dermatitis, swim are rich, like bath is such like that. And the one more thing I want to tell if you, if you find this type of snail, no, don't leave it. This is the one a beautiful colored snail. This is a cut in Africa. You can see plenty of snails during the monsoon season. And this is responsible for angiostrongolosis. It's a nematode uh, uh, zoonotic disease. And it is transmitted by, so this angiostrongolosis. Uh, Contonensis, this is a rat lungworm transmitted by this Acatina fluca. And uh, if it uh, this transmitted by the uh, snail, no, the children, particularly children, get brain fever or eosinophilic meningitis. And that's why, you know, further study is needed. So what we can do, because many of the snail born trematode parasitic diseases are there, at least, you no, know, by collecting the snail, find out the larval stages so that, you know, we can uh, say whether this act as a uh, transmitting agent for uh, zoonotic disease like that, we can find out by using uh, PCR techniques so that you now we can uh, control this disease. And uh, even what uh, we are doing you now by simply collecting the snail, either by putting the water in the sunlight, with, by, by seeing the discharge of the circaria, we can identify, or by doing the molecular technique, uh, the tissue taken from the snail. By the way, also we can find out what type of uh, the, the parampistome or the trematodes are inside the snail so that we can uh, 
uh, say that particular area is having the particular parasitic uh, parasite, uh, the response for zoonotic disease. By the way, also we can give some awareness to the public so that you now the people will uh, aware of the zoonotic disease. And now coming to the uh, tick, even the tick also responsible for causing zoonotic disease. This is the one tick, uh, the larval stage, nymphal stage. Uh, I have collected from the the the, the topmost one is larval stage of the autobase magnini, and the bottom one is the uh, nymphal stage of uh, things. So the, the human being, mostly you know those people. This is the uh, spinous ear tick. The spines will be present all over the body of the tick. So it will be in the ear of the sheep because it's more common in, uh, in in India. If you see, this is the only area in my experience I can say this is uh, uh, we have recorded in the sheep breeding research station at uh, Nilgiri Hills of Tamil Nadu. And those people you know going as a shepherd going to graze these sheep, you know, they may get the infection. What will happen if these larval, the uh, the larva, the the nymph, you know? And the autobius beginning larval stage with the you no know, spines, you no, know, the actual location like in sheep, it will be in the ear of the human being. It will because of the spine all over the body by moving, you no, know, it will damage the eardrum. It is more common in horses. It will there you no know, uh, deafness and the eardrum damage is the same way it produces the human being. So you have to take care. So simply by 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 collecting the uh, uh, no. Uh, larva nimble stages, you know, uh, uh, from the year of the uh, people, you now we can find out. And the another one takes, you no, know, even uh, this is the one uh, while while uh, the, the the children, you no, know, while uh, going inside the uh, sheep uh, goat shed, you no, know, they accidentally got the bite of the Rhipicephalus hemophysalis. You see how this type of, you know, almost two millimeter size and. Uh, the lesion will be you know, persist for 16 days. So it will produce the, the irritation and oozing out the fluid. And uh, we don't know, but we are seeing only the lesion. If you do some molecular work to find out what type of uh, the bacteria, virus it transmits, you know, again, that will uh, uh, more is helpful to the uh, public. So now I'm showing you no know, in my experience, wherever I'm going now is to collect all the data, ticks, you know, what type of ticks it causes. By the way, I identified. If you do some molecular work, tick bond uh, stages, tick bond uh, the parasites inside the uh, ticks. Now we may uh, come up with the different different uh, uh, things about the virus and bacteria, protozoan parasites. The other one, uh, even this is also collected from the human being. That is uh, hyaloma isaki. This is a semi tick collected from 52 years old uh, lady at Godalore. Uh, what will happen here? Uh, so if if ILOMA ICK takes no bite, uh, even the aged or five years old or 24 years old, no, you see uh, this type of eruption, like you know, the small erupted uh, uh, lesions will be there. They are continuous itching, irritation. The fluid it will be persist for a long time, even almost you know 0.5 centimeter. Uh, and sometimes it produces the wound also. So since it is a uh, Iloma Isaac is a uh, uh, long elastic. It has the long mouth parts because of penetrating in a deep. You no, know, they produce this, this type of lesion. It will persist for many, you know, month. And uh, then other uh, things. Even uh, these are the hemophysalis pinigera. We have collected uh, uh, the patient, you know, having the lesions like this. We have collected the ticks and find out they are the uh, amblyomatics and uh, hemophysalis pinigera. So here, what will happen if the ticks bite? No, the uh, people are having the tendency, like uh, the symptom, like reluctant to work and warm until to remove the ticks because it is mostly caused by even if you see the hemophysalis, even the adult are so small, it is not easy to identify. But uh, the it is caused by the, the patient is caused by the and it will be eyed in the inconal hairs of the inconal region. So very difficult to remove the ticks. So the people will have the continuous vomition sensation. So only if you remove the ticks, then only the uh, affected people comes to the normal and reluctant to work. So the, the bite of the tick, hemophysalis by, by uh, spagera, even you see the lesions. You may ask, wonder how this small girl got the infection. So the, the, the parents are going to the field to collect the firewood work. Firewood and uh, even uh, working with the coffee tea estate. So 
uh, while sleeping uh, with the no daughters no the daughters getting the infection so this is the this is the symptom produced so all these symptom are related with the kfd once if this type of symptom getting immediately they are going to uh, the shimo and get the inf uh, injection vaccine against this so the ticks are also important so we have studied some work with uh, no what type of tick uh, causing the this type of symptom and what type of damage but if you study further studies on uh, what type of bacteria pathogen even recently we have collected uh, uh, the wild boar one tick is ixodes scapularis in uh, nilgiri seal that is the tick responsible for lyme disease if any human being having this lyme disease they 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 will have the gunshot wound lesion all over the body now imagine this lyme disease so far it reported in uh, himalayan area only himachal pradesh himalayan border and nowhere in india but you know we have collected the ticks in uh, in the southern india so if you find you know whether it is it has this uh, lyme spreading uh, passing you know, causing organism borrelia and uh, likewise you know you have to find out what type of by collecting the ticks from the human being if you find you no know, what type of bacteria or virus produce that then more you and another two three is the hardest and uh, so uh, okay so uh, many uh, the conventional methods are there uh, even direct direct smear method is there sedimentation technique is there willis technique is there and these are the method is a simple one but uh, by finding the eggs okay uh, but but a certain you no know, this year the problem is uh, the zoonotic this is mostly by the larval stage uh, we can't expect for the eggs in the human beings there you have to apply in the molecular work or the zero diagnostic methods but even in the routine uh, diagnostic sometimes you, know, you may have the pseudo parasite like you no know, parasite like pa uh, particles you no know, may be confused for that also the molecular test is essential and uh, even uh, for uh, blood smear uh, blood, blood produced on parasite we can see the uh, no organism inside or outside like trypanosoma evansi or uh, the inside you no know, babesia telliria also and the even babesia sees occurs in the human being but it's very difficult to find out in the blood smear so what we can do you no know, these are the the entire i already you know uh, mention about uh, the important uh, the test for the hydrodosis cystic cirrhosis and toxocariasis and uh, coming to uh, to see other uh, the parasitic zoonotic disease you can apply the same way you know the dart elisa elisa even uh, the this type of latex augmentation test and uh, the western blood analysis to find out you know what type of you know the, uh, the antigen molecules are there and the flow through technique now it is you now applied for all disease you know who are apply for this technique or particular disease you know that you can get the patent also likewise you know so many diagnostic tests are there elisa dart elisa for diagnosing of the uh, things these are the some of the molecular technique even uh, uh, pcr primary pcr multiplex pcr likewise you know so many are there even loop mediated um uh, amplified uh, isothermal uh, amplification like there's you no know, so many things are there for diagnosis of the uh, human uh, the zoonotic diseases okay so thank you for the opportunity since you no know, the time constraint no i restricted and uh, instead of covering all the parts you no know, since the three are important hydrodysosis cystic cirrhosis toxicosis i have enlightened even the food bond like you know, even by eating of a fish uh, fran or the the crab are uh, the snail snail even some area you know they are eating the snail also they are certain uh, snail born so the disease is also there so we have to take care uh, to by applying this type of latest molecular technique so that we can give the awareness you can control the uh, zoonotic disease in the human being thank you yeah thank you sir if any queries any questions you can ask yeah yeah thank you thank you so much sir You have yeah. covered all the, the zoonotic diseases which are shared between the human and animals, and the diagnosis uh, of these diseases for early diagnosis, and all the latest uh, techniques available commercially and in certain laboratories developed the test so that you have covered most of the uh, diagnostic tests which are maybe available uh, useful for all those which are mainly involved in this uh, parasitic field. So thank you so much, sir. Uh, I would like to invite uh, one or two questions from the participant. 
So any question in the chat box? Okay. Hello. Any question from the participant? Okay. Thank you, sir. I think. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for the, you for the opportunity. Right. Thank you very much. Uh, and, uh, huh? Hello, sir. Hello. Yeah. Uh, sir, I have yeah, one, 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 one question. Okay. Okay. Uh, tell me, uh, sir, uh, very, very excellent, uh, good presentation. Uh, I have Thank you, sir. One, one question. Is there any uh, molecule? Vaccine molecule developed against uh, uh, heart atidosis. Any progress recent? Uh, even uh, vaccines are uh, no undergoing. They are available by using the no uh, uh, EG EG one fifty or something. There you know. Excretory uh, Developing a vaccine. It's a, it is under process. Going on. It's the EG ninety five. Protein molecule. Yes, sir. Yes. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. I think there is no more question. Uh, thank you so much, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank I have one question, sir. Sir. Sir, is there any sir field based test for identification of common sir parasitic diseases have you developed or uh, it will come? Any field based test? Uh? What sir? What sir? Any Anand? field based test or technique for identification of some common parasitic zoonotic diseases, sir? He is asking about sir. Any field yeah, based test? Field test. Field no, this is a lateral flow assay. Techniques. Lateral flow assay is a field test. I know, like you know, the pregnancy testing. No, one of our uh, faculty member, Dr. Jayatilakan. No, he has uh, did uh, the flow through technique for uh, uh, the. Uh, the hydrated cyst and uh, he has applied for patent also. This is the one easy technique. So you can take it anywhere to the field. Just know by having the device so to flow through technique, the technique, having the antigen coated, antigen coated. So it's easy to uh, uh, do. You can uh, uh, no, use it in the field. How much cost will come, sir, for testing these samples, sir? How much cost? So initially, no. Initially, only the, the 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 cost involved for the machinery, everything. So if you have the machine, no, the the cutter uh, like that, no, the device, no. Otherwise, no, very very cheap only, very cheap. Okay. So once if you know if you have that uh, the equipments or device for making the no uh, the the cutter ch 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 device, no, for that only cost. Otherwise, no for no for casting each sample maybe. Uh, some more five to ten rupees, likewise, like that. Thank you, thank you, Dharma. Thank you, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm good. Thank you, sir. Thank you for that. Okay, thank you, thank you so much, sir. Uh, uh, sir, sir, one request. I think uh, you have to send that uh, three to four pages uh, write up about your. Sir, you send it, sir. You already sent. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. I sent. Okay. Thank I you so much, sir. Yeah, yeah. Uh, then we'll. Uh, Come to the next uh, speaker, Dr. Uh, Sri Krishna Islu, sir. Sir, are you there? Hello. Sir, Dr. Islu, sir. Sir, namaskar, sir. Namaskar, namaskar, sir. How are you, sir? Thik, thik, thik. How are you, sir? Yes, it's going, sir. Yeah, yeah. Happy to see you. After Good. a long time. So, so also, you are going, sir. Yeah, thank you, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Oh, madam, namaskar. Namaskar. Thank <laughs> you, madam. Yeah. So the we have the next uh, eminent speaker, Dr. Sri Krishna Islu sir. He is very uh, uh, kind enough to uh, accept our invitation to present today's <laughs> uh, growing trades. So I request uh, Dr. Rajesh Vikrati, madam. Hello. Audience, audience, please, please uh, mute yourself. Don't don't talk in between. Hello. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Sir. So I uh, request uh, Dr. Rajeshri Padil, madam, uh, to just introduce uh, Dr. Sri Krishna Islu, sir, to the audience. Uh, Dr. Madam, please. Uh, thank you, uh, Jhende, sir. Uh, it's my pleasure to introduce Dr. Sri Krishna Islu, 
who is working as a professor and laboratory director uh, karnataka veterinary animal and fishery sciences university cva rabies Labor uh, diagnostic laboratory world organization for animal health that is oie reference laboratory for rabies department of microbiology veterinary college kopsu hebel bengaluru uh, dr islur sir has been working in the field of veterinary bacteriology virology immunology and biotechnology for the last 25 years during his tenure as scientist at erstwhile aicrp on edmas pd edmas icr bengaluru uh, in charge tb and brucellosis control unit department of animal husbandry veterinary science government uh, of uh, karnataka and subsequently as assistant and associate professor department of microbiology veterinary college kopsu hebel bengaluru uh, sir was involved in development of diagnostic and vaccines molecular epidemiology and human resource development with special reference to brucellosis bovine mastitis and rabies sir has been the principal investigator of various national and international research projects on brucellosis bovine mastitis and rabies funded by extra mural agencies such as world bank ICRDC, and private agencies. Dr. Islur sir was involved in organizing 18 national level training programs on ELISA techniques for brucellosis, infectious bovine rhinotracheitis, and rinder pest at ICR Edmas Bengaluru from 1995 to 2001, and several training programs on veterinarians. Uh, for veterinarians under ASCAD and rabies diagnosis by advanced tool at Veterinary College Bengaluru during 2005 to 2011. During 2013, Dr. Islu sir has undergone training program on biosafety and aspects of rabies at CDC Atlanta, USA and brucellosis at Virginia Tech Blasburg, Blasburg USA. Uh, sir was involved in establishment of COSU CVA Crucial BSL 2 Rabies Diagnostic Laboratory at Veterinary College Bangalore and OIE twinning of this laboratory with CDC Atlanta, USA and Animal and Plant Health Agency, United Kingdom. He was nominated as director of this laboratory and represented India for the region, regional training on rabies at the OIE Reference Center. Uh, Changchun, China during 2017 and, uh, and Kathmandu, Nepal as a part of the SARC workshop of rabies in 2019. Diagnosis of rabies in animal under the ongoing OE twinning, twinning program with CDC Atlanta, US and Animal Plant and Animal Health Agency, Webridge, UK. Sir visited CDC Atlanta, US, uh, APHA, University of Liverpool, United Kingdom, Curtin University, Perth, Australia, and various countries as a part of research collaboration or resource person. Dr. Islur, sir, is the veterinary coordinator of the recently completed WHO Association for Prevention and Control of rabies in India, that is APSE survey on rabies in India. The most important contribution of Dr. Islur sir include the development of AB ELISA kit for bovine brucellosis, multiplex PCR for region mastitis causing pathogens, biofilm based vaccine against bovine mastitis, rapid fluorescent focus inhibition test for estimation of anti rabies vaccinal antibodies. Molecular epidemiology of animal rabies. Employing above mentioned tools has additionally generated funds for the institution. He played a pivotal role in the uh, Lakshmadeep survey on rabies under WHO program. Dr. Islur sir was the organizing secretary of the annual convention and international conference, conferences of IVMI. Veterinary Association and Pan CVA International Conference. He has guided 11 PhD and 16 MUSC students in veterinary microbiology. He was a resource person 
and organizer in total 39 national and international training refresher course summer and winter school seminars conferences symposia and workshop he has authored several research publications uh, which are international uh, which include international 49 and national 58 dr islu sir was the recipient of prestigious national level lal bahadur shastri young scientist team research and sardar patel best institution awards of icr and dbt commercialization award during 2001 to 2 he was the recipient of best veterinarian award for the year 2003 national fellow of indian society for veterinary immunology and biotechnology in 2017 and the national level visionary award for the outstanding achievement in rabies by the indian veterinary association in 2019 in the international conference held uh, in uh, new delhi considering his contribution in the field of animal rabies he was nominated by oie that is world organization for animal health uh, france to represent india in the national international workshop on rabies held in sark headquarters at kathmandu nepal in june 2019 Currently, Dr. Islu sir is involved in evolving strategies along with the Bruhut Bengaluru Mahanagara Palike for the control of rabies in dogs in Bengaluru. Recently, Dr. Islu sir was the member of the National Technical Advisory Committee of Ministry of Health, uh, Government of India, for the control and elimination of rabies in India by 2013-30, and it was. i uh, involved in making the national action plan for elimination of rabies in india further he has been designated as the oi expert for rabies at the oi reference laboratory for rabies by the director general oie france in 2020 catering to the need of uh, providing technical input and scientific excellence on rabies uh, to south asian and the southeast asian region This is the first OIE reference laboratory for rabies in the South Asian and South uh, and Southeast Asian region, and the twelfth in the world. Dr. Islu sir was the organizing secretary of the OIE virtual training on diagnosis of rabies for SARC countries on fifth and sixth November 2020 and eleventh to thirteenth, thirtieth October 2021. Regional tripartite. workshop on rabies in january 2021 involving 11 states and national training on diagnosis of rabies in 2022 with the support from ncdc government of india current priorities of dr islu sir are development of cost effective uh, user friendly in house quality immuno diagnostics for rabies for the strengthening of diagnosis of rabies through human resource development and implementation of rabies control strategies in the region so we are fortunate to have such a eminent speaker with a complete insight of insight of rabies for four week certificate course as well as on the occasion of world rabies day 2022 one health zero death sir it's our pleasure to listen uh, you so i welcome dr ishnur sir and uh, i request him uh, to deliver the speech on on rabies in livestock growing threat ishnur sir please uh, madam am i audible and uh, visible Jadis yes sir? sir yes sir yes sir so dhanyawad dr rajeshri patil gandge madam for the exhaustive introduction of mine and uh, thank you so much for that and uh, good afternoon to all the participants all the organizers and uh, before i begin i just would like to remain highly highly thankful to the organizers my friends from uh, mafsu khas uh, karke one of my best friends uh, dr jhender sir and uh, dr rajeshri patil gandge madam for making me a part of this uh, wonderful training program so thank you so much all the organizers uh, from the mafsu uh, now uh, as far as the topic of the day's presentation is concerned 
uh, I have been asked by the organizers to speak on whatever little I know as far as uh, uh, the occurrence of rabies. What is the situation of rabies in livestock? Indeed, in fact, uh, this is one of the growing threats. Uh, Madam, whether uh, the slide is uh, visible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It is visible. Please proceed. Yeah. In fact, I am representing uh, the Karnataka Veterinary Animal Fishery Sciences University, KVFSU, CVS stands for Commonwealth Veterinary Association, Rabies uh, Diagnosis Laboratory. Uh, in fact, uh, this is the 12th uh, such OI reference laboratory for rabies at the global level itself. As Madam said earlier, it was known as OIE. Now, OIE is actually renamed as the World Organization for Animal Health. And uh, this is acronymed as a WOAH because I'm sure all the participants are, uh, at least most of them are actually the veterinarians. And we must know this about uh, World Organization for Animal Health, which is uh, to be pronounced as OVA. This is a very recent change. Earlier it was actually known as uh, OIE, which stood for Office of International Episodes. And this is in fact affiliated to the Department of Microbiology at Veterinary College, Kwafso Habalina, Bangalore. Uh, well, uh, it's my fortune to share whatever little I know as far as uh, the rabies in livestock. On the eve of uh, World Rabies Day, uh, that is uh, scheduled tomorrow itself. You know, on uh, 28th of September 2022, today it's actually 27th September. And uh, we are on the eve of this uh, World Rabies Day, not celebration, but observation. Because Tomorrow is the day when the great French scientist, who is popularly known as uh, the father of uh, vaccinology, father of microbiology, that is uh, Louis Pasteur's uh, death anniversary, in fact. You know, he passed away on 28th of September 1895. And uh, you know his uh, immense contributions. Uh, there are a plethora of uh, contributions have actually come from the great uh, person, Pasteur. Uh, but as far as this particular topic of relevance is concerned, he was the first person to save the first man from this deadly disease, rabies, uh, through the vaccine that he was developing way back in early 1880s. You know, his level of commitment, it was so much that, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the boy, the nine-year-old boy who is seated here is uh, Joseph Mister. It looks he was very badly bitten by a rabies-suspected dog. Then he is Joseph Mister's mother. She brings him to Louis Patcher, who had still not completed the development of that anti rabies vaccine. But there was no other go. He had to save this. By then, he had already carried out clinical trials in uh, rabbits, and he was actually happy with the vaccine that uh, Louis Patcher was actually developing. But he didn't have a chance to complete. He had to use that vaccine on this Joseph Mister, and thank God, Joseph Mister. Uh, survives that uh, deadly disease and this is just the picture you know this episode occurred precisely on 6th july 1885 and 6th july 1885 joseph mister the the first man was administered with this anti rabies vaccine and then his uh, life is uh, saved and that today is celebrated as world zoonosis day all over the world 6th july is the world zoonosis day when the first mankind was actually administered with the shot against uh, rabies then 28th of September is the death anniversary of the great scientist who saved the mankind from this uh, deadly disease, rabies. Well, this is the theme of uh, the World Rabies Day that we are going to observe tomorrow. You know, this, this year, the theme given by the international agencies is rabies, one health and zero deaths. What we mean by one health? In Sanskrit, that's our, uh, basically the mother tongue. And uh, there, one health is uh, referring to Vasudeva Kutumbakam. That means uh, human beings, animals, all the living beings, they are constituting the major chunks of the family. We are all belonging to the same community. That is the meaning of one health. Medical professionals, the veterinary professionals, various other stakeholders, we cannot be working under isolation. We have to be working under the same umbrella, and that umbrella is named as one health. And that is the theme of uh, this particular uh, World Rabies Day that we are going to observe tomorrow. And uh, zero deaths, zero by 30. That is a global level decision that was taken by four international agencies, WHO, OVA, FAO, and the Global Alliance for Rabies Control, that is GARC. 
we are already in 2022 and we are going to complete 22 in a couple of months and then with that we are left with only eight years to reach the global goal of elimination of this deadly disease rabies well good beginning has already been made globally as well as nationally and so also in most of the states including maharashtra as well as karnataka and we are all uh, to be working on the war footing and uh, elimination of uh, this dog mediated rabies by 2030 although it is herculean task it is not impossible let us have that commitment and with the global goal of uh, elimination of this dog mediated uh, human rabies by 2030 it should not be impossible and we are confident about it and we are all part of the environment that is what all the illustrations which are depicted in this emblem are indicated this hand indicates the human health dog represents the animal and here you see this love symbol no this is indicating the human as well as animal bonding so they are all uh, constituting the part of this uh, one health and under this one health umbrella let all of us join together to ensure that the dog mediated human rabies is uh, eliminated by the year 2030 yeah the moment we think of rabies everybody thinks of dogs no doubt that dogs are the major vectors as far as transmission of rabies to human beings as well as uh, other susceptible animals is concerned but nevertheless we are losing our very rich resources that is livestock because of this deadly disease rabies which was actually considered to be a sort of neglected but nowadays because livestock are actually constituting the major backbone of the rural uh, say poor farmers family and uh, there is increasing occurrence of uh, rabies in livestock this is another area that uh, the administrators the policy makers we the researchers that academicians uh, we will have to drive our attention towards the occurrence of rabies in livestock which is actually a growing threat you know how important the livestock in the country are as far as contribution to the gdp is concerned normally the asian continent as well as the african continents are considered to be endemic for rabies and dogs are the major vectors as far as transmission of rabies to other animals human beings is concerned but nevertheless other biting animals could also be responsible for transmission of rabies to other animals with respect to especially the cattle or buffaloes the livestock which get into the deep forest uh, for the grazing wherever they would have been exposed to the bite from this uh, rabid uh, mongoose rabid wolf or rabid jackal at times even to the rabid cat uh, rabid uh, dogs or uh, the rabid cats you don't know to which uh, particular uh, rabid animal the livestock were exposed to once they get back maybe after a couple of weeks or after one month they start showing the symptoms of rabies by that time nothing can be done but please remember why i am uh, showing this particular illustration someone is putting the raw hand in the oral cavity this should never be practiced because saliva is a very good uh, source of uh, virus irrespective of the species of animals and generally we say that uh, uh, cattle and buffaloes most of the livestock they are considered to be the dead end hose it doesn't mean to say that the saliva is actually negative for rabies viral uh, particles it does have but uh, thank god the livestock most of the livestock including cattle and buffalo they do not have the tendency to bite and you know dogs have the tendency to bite and uh, these uh, wild corners they have the tendency to bite biting is the major route by which the rabies is transmitted thank god it is not there in cattle and buffaloes but then nevertheless they succumb to this deadly disease and thereby it can really cripple the economy of the rural farmer and supposing someone is actually having a, a slit or a cut on the finger they maneuver the oral cavity because of various purposes including our own veterinary uh, fraternity uh, they whenever they uh, examine the oral cavity uh, they could stand a chance of picking up the infection in case there is a slit or cut on the fingertips and then the animal is already uh, carrying the virus in the saliva so what i request and suggest all our veterinary friends and then others associated with the animal husbandry activities is please use the gloves whenever you handle the oral cavity and try to avoid handling the oral cavity supposing there is a small cut or incision on the finger or the finger uh, or the hand yeah this particular illustration says uh, uh, how, how the animal could be bitten and then the, there is a deposition of the uh, saliva at the local site of uh, bite virus can undergo replication in the neuromuscular junction for some time then once it gets into the nervous system it travels through the nervous system to the spinal cord and then through spinal cord to the central nervous system 
and once the virus is in the central nervous system then the clinical manifestations of rabies are actually exhibited by the affected animal and please remember even before one week of exhibiting the clinical signs and symptoms and manifestations of rabies by any of the species of animals especially the dogs the virus can be excreted through saliva no symptoms but the virus is there in saliva at least one week uh, prior to the exhibition of the symptoms such as uh, indiscriminate biting and then uh, behavioral changes this is most risky period you don't know that the animal is actually having rabies and then the saliva could be a source of virus so this is where uh, one has to uh, take utmost care whenever they handle the oral cavity or whenever they share the food with the animals this kind of uh, practice is there with respect to the pet animal lovers they need to take care of uh, this what are the clinical signs in animals i don't think i need to get into the details of uh, the clinical signs in animals but most typically uh, rabies at times can be atypical at times the typical so called clinical manifestations need not have to be exhibited by the animal uh, with reference to nervous behavior or change in the behavior at times there can be unexplained progressive paralysis and it can be increasing can be decreasing and there can be uh, altered spinal reflexes or at times it can be normal spinal reflexes which could be very very confusing and then there is a, a change in the temperament of the animal and then the owner could really observe some kind of behavioral changes in the animal immediately such animals must be examined by the uh, field veterinarians you know there are uh, clinical course comprises of uh, three overlapping symptoms prodromal symptoms excitative as well as the paralytic uh, phase and it is the excitative or the furious stage uh, which is very very typical in most of the animals because they typically exhibit the changing in uh, the behavior but this is seen in most of the cases but not all animals need to progress through all these stages it can be very much variable as far as the cattle are concerned we know uh the symptoms can be yawning of animals that we say generally double bellowing and then there is behavioral changes with uh, with respect to placid expression and then there can be incoordinated movements the animal may not be able to stand properly and then animal is hypersensitive it can have hyperesthesia and it can be very very aggressive in fact i myself personally have actually recorded on video of uh, one cattle if uh, time permits uh, the organizers i can just uh, share those videos uh, for the benefit of uh, all the participants then it can exhibit the signs of choking as well as the toxicity it can be confused with uh, hcn uh, uh, poisoning itself so this is the time wherein our uh, livestock owners or the veterinarians they can just handle the oral cavity thinking that there is some choking why it has gone off feet so one has to be extremely careful then as far as sheep and goats are concerned uh, unlike in case of cattle and uh, buffaloes many sheep are affected they can be showing the clinical manifestation uh, over a period of just couple of days because there is a tendency of uh, the rabid uh, biting animal to bite uh, several uh, sheep in the same flock so if that is the case then there can be again a nervous uh, disorders are seen aggressive wool pilling is one of the typical manifestations of uh, the sheep affected sheep and then head pressing i have one beautiful video which was uh, shared to me by one of our field veterinarians dr sunil kumar uh that the sheep the affected uh, as a sheep it goes and repeatedly hits the head i think i will be able to find some uh, time to show all these uh, uh, videos with you in this presentation itself there is in coordination as far as the movement is concerned so at time the sheep can be paralytic as well and then ultimately it leads to the death as far as uh, the occurrence of rabies in case of a pigs the early signs can be again profusive salivation it can be aggressive it can be having uh, the incoordinated movements and uh, interestingly there can be backward walking and in the final stages there can be convulsive seizures and then paralytic stroke experienced by such pigs uh, one of our uh, again trainees uh, from uh, kerala uh, she had actually recorded one uh, pig suffering from uh, rabies and showing the convulsive seizures i hope i should be able to find some time to share these video uh, videos with you but furious form of rabies is uh, documented very very rarely in case of uh, pigs here we have some pictorial expressions of uh, the sheep and then camel and then cattle with a typical double bellowing and then uh, the goat yes 
as far as uh, the situation in the country is concerned you know india is considered to be endemic for rabies uh, not only for dogs but also for uh, several other species of animals and it is a major challenge to manage these rabies cases in our country and a timely uh, intervention by the veterinary college kvfsu hebbal with the immense support from uh, one of my mentors our uh, beloved teacher professor s abdul rahman saab who was uh, the past president of common the association and sir is actually at present he is uh, uh the executive executive director of a commonwealth veterinary association and with his international connectivity with his commitment for the veterinary profession this laboratory facility was actually brought to us through the financial support from the crucels and then thanks to professor abdul rahman as the, as well as yet another teacher of mine uh, dr yathiraj sir who was the then dean of veterinary college we were able to set up this uh, laboratory for the purpose of strengthening diagnosis of uh, rabies in animal since then initially we were immensely supported by the cdc atlanta and then we, since then we have also conducted series of national level training programs on how to conduct the, the diagnostic uh, tests by employing uh, fluorescent antibody technique and then derit and then molecular uh, tests with reference to reverse transcription pcr for detection of virus for diagnostic purposes using the brain samples another important mandate of the lab is uh, to employ virus neutralization test Uh, such as uh, rapid flow and focus inhibition test to estimate the anti rabies vaccinal antibodies uh, but this is very very cumbersome the test itself uh, takes about some two days and uh, one of the issues is we must have a bio safety uh, level laboratory to carry out this uh, rapid flow and focus inhibition test because you are going to handle highly highly virulent international reference strain of uh, rabies virus and then you need to have expertise for cell culture system but nevertheless this is approved a test by who as well as oi we are regularly employing this test at present especially for uh, international uh, shipment of uh, the pet animals uh, such as dogs and cats this test cannot be employed by most of the laboratories so considering the limitations of rffit uh, the dbt government of india ministry of science and technology have they have funded us to develop the recombinant g protein based indirect quantitative elisa for uh, detection of uh, anti rabies vaccinal antibodies uh, in the serum samples and now that the country uh, has already launched a national action plan for rabies elimination and you know most of the states we are in the process of launching state action plan for rabies elimination sapre including Ma- maharashtra as well as karnataka and most of the states uh, so there just to check the success of this mass dog vaccination every time we cannot go on employing this uh, very cumbersome test which is restricted to hardly one or two laboratories including ours in the country or in the south asian regions whereas elisa is a very simple test and uh, even who oi they also recommend that elisa quantitative elisa can be employed for monitoring the successful implementation of a mass dog vaccination and this is our another uh, mandate we have already uh, discussed these so this is our fluorescent antibody technique which is a gold standard test and this is called a direct rapid immunohistochemistry test this derit is uh, having lot of advantages over uh, this conventional dfa because ordinary student microscopy is sufficient even in the village areas even just by the side of the carcasses also so so this uh, derit test can be employed and then this is a lateral flow assay uh, and at present uh, who is immensely helping us uh, through the support of these bionote based kits bionote based kits and uh, you, you know the principle of lateral flow say which actually works on the principle of immunochromatography uh, just uh, by the side of carcass uh, the rabies uh, can be diagnosed if the brain sample can be collected even this can also be employed for uh, anti mortem diagnosis of uh, rabies in any species of animals but anti mortem diagnosis of rabies either in human beings or in case of animals is not a full proof whenever the saliva is actually taken as a source of virus because virus is excreted intermittently it is purely a chance factor that virus gets excreted from the saliva and at that particular point of time the veterinarian collects the saliva and then they can detect the presence of rabies viral antigen in the saliva samples so to cut the story short i just would like to make a statement that detection of viral antigen in saliva either by lateral flow assay or by pcr techniques is an indication that yes 100% the animal is actually positive for rabies but the other way is not true if we are not in a position to detect the presence of viral antigen in the saliva sample or even the by pcr in the saliva sample 
we cannot come to the conclusion that the animal or the human being is negative for rabies because rabies virus may be there in the central nervous system. But at that particular point of time of collection of saliva, virus would not have been getting excreted. So positive by saliva antimortem is 100% positive, but negative by saliva either by this lateral flow assay, which take hardly 10 minutes to, to detect the presence of viral antigen or by PCR cannot be taken for granted that the animal is negative for rabies. I hope I'm pretty clear. Here you can see some of the, uh, it's not illustration, they are the actually real time, these uh, photographs that we have captured in our lab. See the apple green color fluorescing foci, they are all indicating the uh, clusters of rabies viral inclusions, whereas the brain impression, whereas the brain tissue, it takes red color. This is a wonderful test. But only thing is we must have uh, the monoclonal antibody based conjugate uh, targeting to the end protein of the rabies virus. That's important. Uh, and we must have a quality fluorescent microscope. You can see some three uh, photographs where you can see the positivity. And you, this is one a neuron, this is another neuron studded with the rabies viral inclusions. Whereas in this particular uh, say image, you don't see even a single rabies viral inclusions. Because this uh, impression is actually coming from an animal which did not suffer from rabies, but would have been affected with some other uh, disease. The same test is employed for uh, diagnosis of rabies in human beings or any species of animals, including any of the livestock. This is about uh, the direct ordinary student microscope is uh, sufficient. And here you can see, instead of uh, green colored fluorescing foci, we can see red colored fluorescing, uh, the red colored inclusions. And uh, here also, they are also referred to as uh, the viral inclusions. And in the background, you can see the blue colored uh, nuclei of the brain cells. This is very simple test. And this test is doable even in the polyclinics in the uh, district level. You know, uh, the India is actually going through the massive reorganization of the Department of Animal Husbandry in most of the states, even including our state, Karnataka. And then there is a concept of what is called establishment of a polyclinics at each and every district. You see, in all the polyclinics, as I understand, they are actually having uh, this ordinary student microscope, which we use for uh, teaching microbiology students in their second year BVC itself. You see, the, these ordinary light microscope is sufficient to diagnose rabies without compromising the quality of the test in case we are in a position to employ DIRIT. But DIRIT was initially developed by CDC Atlanta, but of late, they have stopped uh, sharing these uh, reagents with us because of some internal problems. And as a part of one of my PhD students' work, we have developed this uh, DIRIT ourselves in association with the Indian Immunological uh, Limited. Yeah, brain sample collection is one of the issues. You know, we may be having quality diagnostics, but what if the brain samples are not submitted? Conventionally, when we were all students, I'm sure Jende Saab as well as uh, Madam Dr. Gange and so also all the senior veterinarians who are here, they will definitely agree with me. Uh, we were all taught how to collect the uh, complete brain, you know, to collect the hippocampus. We have to open the skull cap and it was very, very uh, meticulous taking time. And then there was a possibility of a spillage of the cerebral spinal fluid or the brain tissues. Because of that reason, uh, most of the times, although animals uh, would have died of uh, suspected cases of rabies, the brain sample was not being submitted to the nearest laboratory, although the facility was there. Considering this limitation and then concern of our field veterinarians, uh, we have actually modified the CDC method of uh, brain sampling, wherein the brain stem can be collected through the occipital foramen uh, method, which is also known as foramen magnum approach without cutting the bone. This is at this location, we can make a deep incision uh, behind the skull and then anterior to the first cervical vertebrae. There is a space, you can make a deep incision, take out the brain stem and then you can use it as a source of uh, uh, the brain suspension. Then you can just uh, do the testing just by the side of carcass. Then you can say whether it is actually positive or negative. And we have provided a large number of uh, training programs for our field veterinarians and so also Southeast Asian uh, veterinary scientists. Uh, as a mandate of this uh, OR reference laboratory and this big test has uh, this approach of a uh, brain sampling has become very, very popular in the South uh, uh, Asian as well as in Southeast Asian region. Yeah, this is just to show where exactly this uh, 
Suram and Magnum is located. Yeah, what is the relevance of this uh, three idiots movie? You see, you you have seen at the end of the movie through Skype, uh, the baby, uh, the heroine of the movie, he's a medical doctor. She will give instructions to the hero of the movie uh, who was basically engineer, doesn't know anything as far as uh, conducting the delivery in case of human beings is concerned. But through his uh, engineering skills and through receiving the instructions from this medical doctor, he will be in a position to deliver the baby. So then we thought, why not we adopt say similar uh, uh, social media with reference to WhatsApp video. Based on WhatsApp video instructions also, we have been able to uh, resource brainstem uh, say samples from the field. And this uh, technique has become, this approach has also become very, very popular. Even without undergoing training, even once the field veterinarians, when they contact us, we share them the YouTube videos. And then through WhatsApp video, we get connected with them. They can see what kind of instruction we are giving from here. We also seated here in Bangalore. We can see in the WhatsApp video itself how they are approaching. And you see this guy for the first time, he collected such a big chunk of a brainstem. Wonderful. It was submitted to our lab. We confirmed that it was actually a very clear cut case of rabies. This is another approach. And uh, uh, here you can see the glimpse of a series of training programs that we have conducted. Uh, at the national level as well as uh, at the international level. We also went to different uh, uh, parts of the country on being invited, such as Himachal Pradesh, Gujarat, Manipur, Andhra Pradesh, Lakshadweep. And this is one, I had a chance to visit uh, the public health department a couple of years ago. Uh, and uh, I think it was as a part of one of the 21 days training program. And uh, this is where uh, I had a chance to interact with the uh, faculties, the participants, the national level participants who are undergoing training program. And that was just uh, the demonstration of la lateral flow assay as well as the DFA. Just the glimpse of uh, our field veterinarians who are doing wonderful work of uh, brain sampling, uh, not just in the uh, dogs, uh, but also in uh, horses as well as in cattle and uh, sheep, various livestock. And uh, there is a, with this, we have been able to resource the information from uh, different parts of uh, the country. There is increasing occurrence of uh, trend of uh, rabies in the dogs. And this is one of the major concerns, cattle and buffaloes. Nearly 84% of the brain samples that we have been receiving uh, from the field across the country are found to be very clearly positive for uh, rabies viral inclusions when we employed this uh, gold standard direct flows and antibody techniques. How are we going to manage the situation of rabies in case of livestock? We, in endemic areas, I am of the opinion that we have to under, undertake pre-exposure prophylactic vaccination even in livestock against rabies because we don't know when they are getting exposed to these uh, rabid biting uh, carnivores. Then another issue is please use only the licensed uh, rabies vaccines where our uh, field veterinarians will definitely be aware of this and all livestock rabies exposures be reported to the veterinarians and once uh, such a cases are actually come across by the veterinarians they must recommend the livestock owners to confine these exposed animals and importantly under no circumstances should anyone place their hand which i have already emphasized in the first few slide itself in the oral character of uh, such animals never ever take uh, a chance then what about the PEP management, supposing there is one vaccinated livestock or a cattle, it is actually reported with a very clear cut history of being bitten by a rabid dog. WHO, they say that we are not supposed to undertake post exposure prophylactic vaccination in case of uh, uh, any species of animals, including the livestock, but we, we beg to differ from them. You see, uh, our feelings, our connectivity with the livestock or the pet animals is entirely different. We cannot simply go for euthanasia of a livestock in case they are uh, uh, bitten by some rabid uh, animals. We, our field veterinarians, they do undertake this revaccination. But supposing the animals are already pre-vaccinated, confine such animals for a period of uh, 45 days after they are given uh, at least the uh, two shots of uh, anti-rabies vaccination PEP. And whenever there is uh, some kind of uh, the injury or if uh, even if there is a oozing out of single drop of blood from uh, such uh, uh, bite victims, please undertake administration of ready-made immunoglobulins. RIG must be administered locally, especially in the valuable animal, especially if the animal is highly precious such as breeding bulls or 
precious bullocks. Even PP, the way PP is uh, followed in case of human beings, such as uh, first aid with a thorough washing, application of soap, then uh, uh, wound, wound washing, and then application of uh, the 70% of alcohol at the site of bite, then uh, uh, post exposure prophylactic vaccination. In addition to this, even rig administration at the site of bite is also very, very important. And we would like to emulate the same thing as it is done in case of uh, animal, human beings. And such animals, it should be discouraged to sell such uh, animals or relocate such animals without the permission of the state veterinarians. What, 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 we should, uh, what should be our uh, strategy? Supposing an unvaccinated livestock is uh, bitten by some animal. The WHO says that we need to euthanize, but it's really tough to undertake euthanasia because there is no suitable compensation for such animals. And then in that case, what is being practiced in the field is they can be subjected to PEP immediately and then confine such animals uh, for a period of six months. And then human contact with the such animals must be kept at a minimal. You know, as far as handling and consumption of uh, the milk or the meat products. Uh, Hello. May I request Hello. one Dr. Alpha to mute yourself? May I proceed further, uh, Jende Sir, Madam? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. G. Yeah. Absolutely, there is not even a single case of documented evidence of uh, picking up rabies by consumption of uh, milk from a rabid cow or through consumption of meat of a rabid animal. Pasteurization temperature will immediately inactivate this uh, highly thermosensitive rabies virus. Therefore, drinking of pasteurized milk or eating thoroughly cooked animal products such as meat does not constitute a threat for the human beings or even for the animals. But deliberately consumption of uh, such a, uh, in fact, no human beings will consume the raw meat. But there is a tendency, there is a practice of consumption or drinking of uh, raw milk at the grassroots level. Just uh, like especially for the wrestling and all, no? Oh, to raw raw milk se shakti a jata hai karke. Then rabies, uh, brucellosis could be a threat in these cases. Here we have a couple of references uh, as far as the pre-exposure prophylactics. Uh, what is to be done in case of an, livestock and then post exposure prophylactic what is what is uh, to be done for i am going to share this ppt with the organizers and uh, any of the participants you can just uh, collect this ppt and any time you can just uh, contact us and then uh, i have in fact highlighted this in red see there is a this is a, one of the most popular textbooks in medicine radot states uh, at all uh, here in this books as far as the pre exposure prophylaxis is concerned for livestock Primary vaccination be carried out at the age of a third month and then annual booster be provided. And in endemic areas, uh, the first booster can be provided after the first shot. Supposing post exposure PEP will have to be practiced. In case of unvaccinated animal, immediate vaccination be carried out and then strictly isolate such uh, uh, animals for a period of 90 days. Then this should be uh, followed by administration of booster vaccine at the third week as well as the eighth week of uh, isolation. Uh, then uh, uh, keep this animal under strict observation for a period of uh, three months. Then one of our PhD students, Dr. Sunil's uh, PhD thesis was actually on estimation of uh, post-exposure uh, uh, vaccine anti rabies antibodies. And then here we have actually employed uh, different regimens. And we found that zero day, fifth day, 21st day uh, regimen, which involves only three shots, that resulted in the peak of uh, neutralizing antibodies to the rabies virus on day 14 of the uh, the last vaccination. And in case of elephants, the two dose regimen has been uh, uh, recommended, and this is one of the publications in High Impact Factory Journal. Yeah, here, uh, uh, what is the relevance of this uh, wolf head and then wolf head that we received from Amaravati? That's in the northern part of uh, Maharashtra state. We have received uh, two wolf uh, heads from Amaravati district and uh, both uh, wolves had uh, bitten uh, several uh, tribals and uh, we have received these wolf heads and then were uh, found to be highly, highly positive for uh, rabies. 
So and then subsequently, all the tribals, uh, they were actually convinced to undergo PEP. As I understand so far, there is no human casualty, especially in the tribal uh, areas. And then the local uh, forest official, uh, Dr. Madam, uh, Mrs. Dr. Singh, she took a lot of interest to uh, manage the situation. And then it was uh, one episode that we have uh, successfully handled. This is one elephant that was actually affected with the rabies way back in 2018. Uh, no history of being bitten. Perhaps uh, whenever it was tied out of the owner's uh, house, uh, so it was bitten by some uh, rabid animal uh, and it was uh, no history was known. All of a sudden it started showing the symptoms and then it succumbed. And you know, this baby elephant by name Rani, she was actually eight years way back in 2018. And just 15 days before it uh, succumbed to this deadly disease, rabies, it was uh, celebrating its uh, eighth birthday. This is some 50 kilo, oh, this uh, uh, cake being uh, cut uh, by this elephant. You can see this actually holding a knife and then it was very, very touchy episode. We, we have actually confirmed that this is actually positive for uh, rabies. You can see this is the viral inclusion uh, seen in the brain impressions of uh, this elephant. Again, uh, episode of uh, rabies in jackal. This jackal had bitten uh, say, several animals as well as human beings. Here you can see the PEP being practiced in case of uh, the bite victims, including both human beings as well as uh, the bullocks. This is in uh, our, our own state in Haveri district. You can see the PEP being done for this. And then uh, rabies immunoglobulin is being administered to this uh, precious bullock in northern part of Karnataka. Then here again uh, in Himachal Pradesh, Dr. Omesh Bharti, Dr. Anil Kumar Sharma, they are doing a wonderful work. You know, intradermal vaccinations have been practiced uh, as a part of uh, post-exposure prophylaxis for uh, uh, the, the bite uh, victims, especially the cattle as well as uh, other livestock. This is Dr. Sunil undertaking uh, vaccination in case of uh, cattle. And here you can see the pre-exposure vaccination being done by our trainees. Dr. Boro, he, he, he is uh, just a very recently he completed his PhD from rabies and we, our laboratory had also supported. And as a part of his PhD work, he has done wonderful work uh, in the northeastern part of uh, India. And you can see Dr. Boro undertaking pre-exposure vaccination in case of uh, cattle in, uh, uh, sorry, in case of uh, elephants in Kaziranga National Park. And some more glimpse of uh, the Assam episodes of uh, rabies in livestock. They are collecting the brain sample through this occipital foramen. Here you can see the sample being collected from on the horse by Dr. Boro and his uh, team. Yeah, this is one uh, glimpse of uh, several photographs of uh, prep in elephants in Kaziranga National Park. Why they have undertaken uh, pre-exposure vaccination in uh, elephants in large number? Because a uh, large number of uh, dogs as well as cattle were uh, uh, confirmed to have died of rabies from this area. So they were really worried whether such rabid dogs, in case they uh, sneak into this park and then in case they start uh, biting these elephants, elephants could pick up the infection. So immediately all the elephants were subjected to pre-exposure prophylactic vaccination. Thank God to my knowledge, so far there is not even a single casualty of elephants. This is uh, some of the work being carried out as a part of uh, intradermal route of vaccination. Uh, because IDRV is having a major edge over the conventional intramuscular vaccination. Because IDRV uses nearly one eighth or one tenth of the regular dose of uh, vaccine. Supposing one ml is uh, required to be administered through intramuscular route, just 0.1 ml is sufficient. So with one ml, instead of uh, protecting only one animal or one human being, Nearly eight to ten human beings or animals can be uh, can be subjected to protection through this uh, intradermal route of vaccination. This is just one publication from Himachal team. Uh, this is when IDRV was also practiced in livestock by one of our own student from the medicine department, and she reports that this is working very well on par with the intramuscular route based uh, immune response. So it saves a lot of uh, vaccine dose. Yes. This is all being done by the veterinarians or the medical professionals. But now bringing a kind of awareness among the general community, the general public is also equally important. We need to educate them. We need to bring in a kind of awareness with them. Because the general public and some of the professions, they are also under the impression that rabies is transmitted only through the bite of the dogs. 
not necessarily even cat bites even the rabid carnivores the wolf jackal mongoose bite also could lead to transmission of rabies this kind of awareness has to be brought then what they need to do immediately supposing say someone is bitten by the rabid dog or rabid animal what is to be done first aid can be done even in the absence of a veterinary doctor or the medical professional isn't it thorough washing of the wound for about 15 minutes uh, intermittently we're cleaning the wound with the uh, alkaline soap uh, that is uh, the soap that we use for washing the clothes and then applying the spirit for this no doctor's uh, intervention is required and by that more than 95 percent of the viral particles if it is deposited at the site of bite through the saliva of the rabid animal can be inactivated next day or immediately as early as possible they need to approach the medical doctor then undergo this uh, vaccination as well as administration of ring which is a must as far as the third category exposure of uh, rabies is concerned we are also trying our level best to popularize the schemes through media by involving the celebrities because if a technical people like you and me if we go and talk to the general public of course some of them they listen but the impact can be more meaningful and provided we involve some of the celebrities such as some famous film personalities or the cricketers and people believe them uh, believe them much more mass dog vaccination impact and it is a success story in mexico as well as in uh, uh, sri lanka you go on undertaking mass dog vaccination the occurrence of rabies in human beings is also significantly reduced and here you can see precisely what has actually happened in sri lanka mass dog vaccination drivers increased from 1991 through 2011 significant reduction in the occurrence of rabies in case of human beings and this is uh, what we uh, as a uh, uh, laboratory that was uh, associated with APH London and then CDC Atlanta as uh, the candidate laboratory initially we und underwent uh, this uh, OI training program under that we have conducted series of national level training program on brain sampling packing shipping diagnosis surveillance and then providing the scientific uh, scientific inputs to our veterinarians uh from different parts of uh, the country including those from uh, maharashtra we have good number of uh, say faculty who have undergone uh, training in our laboratory dr farande uh, is doing a very good work uh, under the guidance of uh, madam dr rajeshri gandge patel madam thank you so much and any time we'll be more than happy to be supporting you and uh, uh, you are the face of our uh, laboratory in maharashtra state thank you so much for all that uh, support that you are giving to dr farande and your uh, other colleagues uh likewise i think other uh, veterinary colleges they are also taking immense interest as far as uh, establishing the satellite centers of uh, rabies diagnosis is concerned yeah uh, then with the elevation of our laboratory to the status of uh, uh, or reference laboratory this in, in fact is the 12th uh, such or reference laboratory for rabies in the world and there are 11 OIE conventional and now it is OIE reference laboratories. You can see where all they are located, and this is where we are located. This is the most recent, the twelfth OIE reference laboratory for uh, animal rabies, and uh, this is our jurisdiction. All the uh, South Asian countries, including all the SAR countries, as well as some of the South East Asian countries. And uh, the major mandate of our OIE reference laboratory is. Uh, to provide a scientific inputs, technical uh, say know how to the people, uh, providing training uh, as far as uh, sampling, diagnosis of rabies, and then exchanging of uh, biological biologicals. We are also sharing the biologicals as a reference materials to the laboratories, including the uh, human laboratories. Also, we have supported in Kerala, and uh, harmonizing the rabies laboratory techniques, and then various other issues associated with the rabies related activities. They are all our uh, mandates. And recently, the Rab Lab, Rabies Laboratory Network, was uh, established with the support from OA. Uh, the headquarters of uh, OA, is, you know, is based in Paris, in France. And we, all the twelve directors, once in every two months, we have uh, some something uh, virtual marathon uh, meetings to discuss about uh, the situation of rabies. What is that we are doing as a reference laboratory in different parts of the world? Now. Uh, we have just a couple of months ago we have also launched what is called south asia rabies laboratory network that was precisely on 14th july of course the process was already begun uh, through the virtual training program that our laboratory had already provided uh, to these uh, south asian countries on the november 2020 on diagnosis of rabies and then to support these uh, south asian countries for establishing rabies serology uh, in the month of october 2021 we are already connected and uh, so we need to bus uh, have a robust uh, diagnostic as well as the surveillance mechanism 
Now, precisely last year, exactly one year ago, that is on 28th of September 2021, that was World Rabies Day observed on 2021. The government of India has actually launched what is called National Action Plan for uh, Elimination of Rabies. And uh, this is one very, very important milestone uh, in our country. And under this umbrella, each and every state in the country, including Maharashtra as, uh, as well as uh, the Karnataka and all the states, we are expected to have what is called a state action plan for uh, rabies elimination and we are already in the pipeline. There are two important components of this uh, national action plan for uh, rabies elimination. The first one is animal health component where minimum 70% of the dog population must be vaccinated. And then the human health component uh, that emphasizes on ensuring timely access for post-exposure prophylaxis, including post-exposure vaccination and most importantly, administration of RIG, that is ready-made immunoglobulin at the site of bite, not necessarily to provide the vaccine through the intramuscular route or uh, through the intravenous route. Yeah, uh, this is what I have already briefed about. And here, oral rabies vaccine is going to play, it can be a game changer because domesticated pets, somehow they can be caught. They can be vaccinated parentally. But what about the street dogs? Catching the street dogs is itself is a Herculean task. If someone catches them, uh, providing vaccination is not a big job. It is not a big deal. So considering this, the, the Goa government, with the support from uh, the team Mission Rabies, which is part of Worldwide Veterinary Services, WVS, I have done a good job and uh, we have also supported the approval of uh, import of this oral rabies vaccine. Hopefully by the end of this year, we are going to have this oral rabies vaccine, at least to give a try in uh, uh, the Goa state. And then uh, let us take, take a call as far as uh, employing this oral rabies vaccine in street dogs in Bangalore as well as in uh, Mumbai. Uh, just let us just uh, wait and watch. And most important, another issue that I just would like to emphasize is all these years, the government veterinarians, the field veterinarians of uh, the government in different states, they were not identified as a major stakeholder in control of rabies. But with this implementation of this NAPRA just last year, the government veterinarians in the village areas as well as urban areas are going to play a major role in control of this dog mediated rabies. Yeah. You see that we have uh, say several PGs as well as PhDs who are working in the field as a uh, veterinary officers. We are, we are actually recommending to uh, to involve their services to associate them in this uh, in this uh, family of uh, uh, the stakeholders. We are associated with uh, the mandate of uh, control of rabies because their expertise should be utilized in the field. Now that the country is going to launch this at the national level, it is very important to involve all the expertise which is available in the field, especially those who have done their master's or PhD program on rabies, irrespective of whether they are microbiologists, pathologists or medicine or public health. With all this, it is not just the veterinarians, not just the medical professionals, not just the wild alpha specialists, even the vaccine manufacturers, the scientists, the researchers, the administrators, the policy makers, all of us have to join our hands together uh, with an attitude of never give up. Let us be complementary to each other without overlapping each other's mandate. And with all this, I request you with my folded hands, let us work collectively, all the veterinarians. You know, precisely 10 years ago, we all were uh, taking a pride that we are all veterinarians and have been responsible for elimination of the first infectious disease of cattle, that is rinderpest. Decidedly, some 11 years ago, 2011, globally the rinderpest was declared eradicated. Now, again, we have got a chance. Let us be, uh, be there collectively. Let us join our hands together and let us work for the system. Let us work for the society. Let us work for the country and then pat our back once again for being primarily responsible for uh, elimination of the dog-mediated rabies uh, from the country, so also from the world. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mafsu, and uh, thank you, organizers, with reference to uh, the Honorable Vice Chancellor, the Organizing Secretary, and one of my best friends, uh, Dr. Jende Saab, Madam Dr. Rajeshri Gandge. Thank you so much for giving me a chance. And I think uh, the time is up. Otherwise, I just wanted to share uh, some two or three uh, videos of uh, the clinical manifestations of uh, rabies in case of cattle, sheep, and pigs. Madam, over to you. Yeah, sir, uh, would you like to show, sir? Are they short videos? 
there, there are videos about some uh, one and up to two minutes, madam. I have please, such please. a three videos. Okay, you can you can share, you sir. Can share please. Sir. Okay, ma'am. We'll uh, just uh, share the video. First, we would like to show a uh, video of a rabid cattle, uh, which I myself had uh, captured some even before our laboratory was actually established. It was way back in some 2011, I suppose, in the outskirts of. Uh, outskirts of uh, Bangalore itself. So there was a spree of a bite in this particular episode. I hope are you able to see this video, Jende sir? Sir, still not visible, sir. Oh, it is not visible still. I think uh, it, it is yet to be shared. No, it is not shared, sir. Oh, okay, sir. A minute, sir. Oh, sorry. I had to stop uh, the previous. Uh... Is it visible now? Yes, sir. Now visible. Yeah, yeah. Okay, madam. Thank you. Now, this is one cow. You see, apparently, if you look at it, uh, nobody can suspect that this is actually having a rabies. You can see the video of the same cattle. Now, you see. See, see, the owner of the livestock, this animal is speaking. See, this is typical double bellowing. It is not able to ingest. Yeah, see the way it is actually jumping. Typical double bellowing. And then the calf of this uh, cat was also bitten by the rabid uh, uh, dog. And that was having typical uh, vent sucking. Now you can see one uh, video of a rabid horse. You see horses may have a biting tendency, unlike a cattle and buffaloes. And subsequently we have also confirmed using the postmortem brain sample that this is clear cut a uh, positive case of uh, uh, rabies. This horse also, all these cases that I am sharing the videos, they were all confirmed cases of rabies. After testing the brain samples by employing DFA as well as a PCR, see the biting tendency and the... so, sir, after showing these clinical symptoms, how see. long they, they, they are alive? Oh, sir, that's a very good question. So, in fact, these animals were alive for about some four to five days. That's all. And maximum we can wait for uh, 10 days, sir, for them to have a natural death. But once the clinical manifestations are exhibited, they succumb to the disease within a mm. couple of days now this is one pig are you able to see this no ah yes sir. yes sir. in case of pig see someone is speaking in malayalam in the background uh. see the other pig is already dead and these pigs were having very clear cut history of being bitten by uh, rabies suspected uh, dog next i have one sheep Yeah, see, see the sheep. This video was captured by Dr. Sunil Kumar from Shikaripur. He's doing a wonderful work in Shimoga district. Mm. All that may be bleeding. It doesn't matter to this. Uh, this mm. is a ram. This is a ram. See, again, repeatedly it goes on hitting the head. This is very oh, typical of uh, rabies in case of uh, oh, this is a species of uh, livestock. Yeah, this is very good, sir. You have captured all this, and it is. Yeah, so that's in uh, that's in brief about the clinical clinical manifestations of uh, rabies in uh, this yeah, yeah. livestock. Dhaniwad sir, once again. Because, because most of the most chance. of the student they have just learned and read in the books. So these are the but uh, and, uh, thank you for sharing all these important videos, sir, to the students and the participants. Sir. Thank you, thank you so much. Oh, sorry, I think uh, video is uh, still playing. Yeah. Uh -huh.
So, sir, we are uh, very much thankful for accepting our invitation and uh, sharing such a beautiful uh, your uh, presentation, real time photographs and uh, videos also, which are very rare to see all these things. So, we are it's a, a pleasure of all the participants and organizers also uh, to listen to you and to see these uh, very good uh, uh, videos as well as your uh, presentation, sir. Uh, of course, uh, the appraisal is also uh, are also coming from uh, participants being an excellent your presentation as well as all these uh, videos and all. So we are very very thankful, sir. Uh, and uh, I think we uh, we have excellent you have excellently uh, uh, justified uh, this uh, whatever lecture has been assigned to you. So now I request participants uh, if they have any one or two questions they can please ask. Madam, before the participants uh, take up the questions, okay. I just have one submission, and we are all working like a team. We are all uh, I told you that Vasudeva Kutumbakam. In the yes. country, we are all members of the same family, yes. the veterinarians, and uh, let us take a pledge on the eve of this World Rabies Day 2022 that we will work for the system, we will work for the country. We are all very well connected and any kind of a technical support to any of our participants, they can straight away either uh, uh, say, share that mail. My mail is with uh, the organizers. It is K Islur, K stands for Krishna, K Islur at gmail.com. Uh, or we have our official email ID is also there. It is RD, RDL, RDL KVFSU CV. I think Madam and uh, Jende Sap can share yes. those uh, contact details yeah, yeah, to the yeah. participants. Yeah. Then, then, yeah, then, then tomorrow, tomorrow we are going to have a global level uh, yeah. observation of a World Rabies Day. And yeah. uh, we have uh, authorities from WHO. She is going to address our uh, participants. And we are expecting nearly 1,000 plus participants all over the globe, all over the globe. And then... And then I am going to share these uh, links and the YouTube live streaming is also planned. And we are mm -hmm. organizing that in our campus itself. We are having uh, eminent authorities uh, from WHO, Director General of OIU, OVA, Dr. Mm -hmm. Monique Elliott. Just now I have rec received her uh, recorded video addressing on this occasion. I wish mm -hmm. our participants get a chance to be part of this technical session as, uh, as well as the inaugural session. If not tomorrow because of this training program, Maybe the YouTube will also be there. I will share with the organizers and uh, kindly make the best use of this uh, World Rabies Day that we are actually organizing tomorrow. Over, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, good afternoon, sir. Oh, sir. Dr. Sir, Namaskar. Dr. Vaskar, yes, sir. Oh, Vaskar, sir. Sorry. Very yeah, nice yeah. to meet you, sir. Again, yes, last time it was Dr. Vaskar, sir, who gave me an opportunity to interact with the participants. Uh, sir, sir, as you, sir, as you said, it's a Vasudeva Kutumka. We are all team and one uh, world we are sharing with each Barabar. other. Barabar, yes, sir. sir. It was a, as is a very excellent presentation. Uh, only thing is, I just want to uh, know about the progress of the oral uh, vaccination, sir. When it will be due and when we can have this one. So, this Thank is you. one of the most important aspects that we have to discuss about. Yes, and uh, last year, Government of Goa. Mission Rabies through Government of Goa, they had submitted uh, the request to the Government of uh, India, uh, DHD, and then in turn, uh, they had actually sought our opinion from this uh, reference laboratory uh, through the formatting, and we have extensively gone through that, and we have also staunchly supported the import of this, and uh, it's a very good development that recently Government of India have also approved Government of Goa for the import of uh, some 10,000 doses of these oral vaccines. I believe these uh, oral rabies vaccines are being used in the Maharashtra as well as Goa border. And then once the floodgate is open, definitely we are going to have it. Hopefully, latest by the at least earliest or rather the latest by the end of this year, we should be able to have these oral rabies vaccines. Once the government of India approves that, then uh, all other states can also have a, have a chance to import it. Without this oral rabies vaccine, it's very, very difficult to read the... Uh, yes, the target of uh, end rabies by 2030. Over. Yes, yes. Thank you, sir. Thank you for the update, sir. Oh, thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, sir, there is one. Uh, there are two questions. The first question is: uh, In cattle and buffalo, what is the dose and route of rabies vaccination? They are not mentioned whether uh, 
it is of uh, pre exposure or post exposure you can you can just yeah yes ma'am in fact i have covered this in one of the slides uh, in the radostates itself they say that third month the first shot can be given for pre exposure prophylactic vaccination then every year the annual boosters have to be provided but in case the area is actually endemic for rabies in other animals then after the first shot at the third month of the age then after that after one month of the first shot that means on the fourth month the first booster can be given and this should be repeated annually every year that is with respect to pre exposure vaccination whereas as far as the pp is concerned it is slightly different for uh, the already vaccinated animals livestock or unvaccinated livestock as far as the vaccinated livestock are concerned they should be immediately isolated then they should be given the vaccination immediately followed by two boosters on third week as well as eighth week then keep them under strict observation for a period of uh, 45 days supposing the animal is the livestock is unvaccinated then immediately again that should be isolated kept under isolation they can undergo this pp and then the field veterinarians have been following the 0 3 7 14 28 the same regimen that was employed for uh, the human beings or even 0 0 day 5th day 21st day that the pp regimen also can be employed but most importantly what i suggest is supposing they are able to visualize the injured part on the body surface in addition to vaccination in addition to first aid they must administer what are called this eric equine rabies immunoglobulin it is not that expensive whereas hric and uh, what is called the rabi shield which is uh, manufactured by serum institute of india from pune uh, which is actually the map for this uh, g protein of rabies virus it may be little expensive but eric can definitely be used and that is how we have saved these bullocks and bulls in haveri district and so also in himachal uh, pradesh pp can be employed in case of uh, animals and this is gaining lot of importance in the region over uh, sir another uh, question from chat box is if the dog is vaccinated and uh, bites a vet then what to do hey, ma'am the same pp regimen can be employed again supposing that invariably most of the dogs are vaccinated but supposing some other rabid dog comes and bites this already vaccinated dog if they are able to locate the site of bite they must thoroughly wash this for a period of uh, for, for a uh, for about some 15 minutes in the continuously flowing water apply this uh, soap which are used for washing the clothes then at the end of uh, the 15th minute they can just mop it dry it and then apply this uh, 70% alcohol at the site of bite that is number 1 then number 2 they can go for a pep vaccination first exposure vaccination the regimen i have already shared then priority is to be given to administration of the equine rabies immunoglobulin just at the site of bite it need not have to be given intravenously it need not have to be given intramuscularly over ah uh, thank you sir next one more question is there from chat box in rabies suspected animal uh, the sample of hair follicle is how much useful for confirmatory diagnosis yeah in fact uh, dr charan kamal singh and this team from uh, pathology department from uh, ludhiana they have actually done some work uh, he has been able to detect the presence of uh, rabies viral rna in the hair follicle uh, by employing the reverse transcription pcr uh, that's okay but it is not 100% uh, the sensitive so there can be an iota of missing as i already told you as far as antemortem diagnosis Uh, we, you must have a laboratory infrastructure for regularly employing a pcr that is one of my concerns if you have uh, the facility for uh, conducting pcr if you have so much of manpower for regularly employing pcr for diagnosis of rabies whenever you collect uh, the nuchal biopsy skin it can be done yeah yeah negative in the hair follicle cannot be taken for granted that the animal is negative for rabies because yeah. of the reasons that i have already shared madam yeah it's so like uh, saliva only exactly yeah. diagnosis yes thank you sir now i think uh, from chat box questions are uh, over uh, i would like to thank you uh, very much sir since you may not be having it, uh, time on uh, exact world Rabi on the day of uh, yeah. world rabies day yeah. because we keep very much busy so we had uh, scheduled this uh, lecture before a day we have also organized uh, uh, that e quiz on rabies tomorrow uh, wherein more than uh, 360 uh, participants have been registered 
Oh. And also, we will be carrying out tomorrow the free pet uh, anti rabies vaccination in uh, OPD, Mumbai uh, Veterinary College, as yes. well as we also have some awareness programs, also, sir. Uh, so, uh, I, I uh, once again thank you, sir, for accepting our invitation and uh, giving us such uh, uh, vast uh, all information regarding uh, whatever topic has been assigned to you. Thank you so much, sir. I am hello. So hello, ma'am. One 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 submission is there. Hello. Please please introduce yourself. Ah ah. Sender sir, myself, Doctor Doke, Assistant Commissioner from Miraj Veterinary Polyclinic. Okay okay. Sir, sir. I have I have one submission with uh, Sri Krishna sir. Sir, Jee. in uh, routinely whenever there is dog bite, particularly rabbit dog bite, we used to give on the very first day anti rabies serum. Which is available in the market that is from Cadilla as well as that is from uh, Serum Institute of India G. at the rate of 20 IU per kg body weight. Uh, the dose, half of the dose we used to give around the dog bite wound and half we give parenterally that is intramuscular. Okay. So uh, the, the cases which we, we treated with the anti rabies serum. Sab, aapke cut rahi hai. Not able to hear your audio. Hello. Hello, Doctor Sir, we are not audible. Please, please repeat our question, please. Uh, Jende Sir, I almost got his question, but I uh, have a suggestion before he actually joins back. Uh, uh, conventionally, the WHO was actually giving its in its uh, guidelines that uh, half of uh, this in locally half, but nowadays yeah. it is very well proven that uh, absolutely no need to give it intramuscularly at any other site. Okay, okay. Pura pura jo and uh, rabies immunoglobulin hai, usko local at the site of bite mein wo infiltrate kare. It okay. is proven because virus undergoes replication intra uh, that uh, neuromuscular junction for that for some time and mm -hmm. all the rabies immunoglobulins must be targeted locally, not at any other site intramuscularly, not in intravenously. Over. Okay, okay. Tika sir, tika. We will communicate him. Okay. Okay, sir. So, okay. sir, dhanyabad, uh, ah. jende sir. And uh, thank you, thank, thank you, you so much for the chance. And uh, wish you all the best. Uh, and uh, let us work in uh, togetherness. And uh, thank you, yes, sir. sir. Yes, sir. I yes, wish sir. all the participants the best. And we are all the time uh, to yes. to support the veterinarians in the country. And uh, whosoever wants, anytime they are most welcome. And thank you so much. Sir, yes, jisko, jisko ye video kuch bhi chahiye, PPT mein, hum yeah, yeah, yeah. Karenge. it can be yeah. shared to any of the participants and they can make the best use of this for uh, the other veterinarians who didn't have a yeah. chance to be part of this. Dhanivad, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much, sir. Okay, sir. Okay. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Now, today's uh, this certificate course webinar have been now over. So participants can leave now, please. And tomorrow's uh, in tomorrow's uh, uh, schedule, there are two lectures by Professor uh, one by Professor.